there is a physical body. And there's also a, a information processing that's going on in the body that is intangible. The body is tangible. The information flowing through the nervous system is intangible, but real. Uh, it exists. Information exists. And in ways that are still not entirely clear scientifically, that flow of information that is supported by flows of the physical substrate of the nervous system, those flows of intangible information enable, give rise to, are potentially entirely sufficient for the experiences that we are having of pleasure and pain, love and hate, loss and gain, um, and that other animals with complex nervous systems, certainly uh, at the level of lizards and goldfish and mice and squirrels and monkeys, other creatures, the fish in the sea, the, the, the porpoises, the dolphins, the whales are having experiences too. Perhaps even the spiders busily spinning away. So that's true. It's okay to acknowledge the distinction between mind and matter, between intangible information and the tangible body or sign or electromagnetic vibration that represents it. Not to go too deeply here. Ultimately, the two co-arise. Mind and matter co-arise, and the flows of information, the flows of it, that support the flows of experience, leave can leave lasting physical traces behind in altered neural structure and function. That's kind of a heavy-duty summary of the mind-body problem. There you go. Uh, and just at a much more practical level, though, we all know it. Uh, Earlier today, my poor body was kind of worn out. I'd been hitting the ground running since 7 a.m., and it was already about 10 hours in a row, and I needed to slow down. I also needed a cup of coffee, so I was helping my body. And as I helped my body, uh, my body helped me become more alert and, and more at ease. So that's kind of what I mean by that, uh, even though ultimately it's one integrated body-mind process, embedded in one integrated unfolding of reality.